TV. An exclusive video of the Doom Chopper. I'm sitting there watching this thing go down right before my eyes. A race car driver trapped in the inferno. He can't open his seatbelt. Well, I thought I was going to die. A mountain climber falls. His only hope for survival is his rope. Next thing I remember is uh, seeing Paramex on the ground. Plus, the driver who sets himself on fire. And Jim Carrey at the hockey game. This is Real TV for Monday, September 13th, 1999. I'm John Daly in the Real TV newsroom. Our next story might make your heart skip a beat. A race car crashes into a giant fireball, and everyone wonders if the driver will make it out alive. Well, this is the story of that driver and the angel who came out of nowhere to save him. I went to Phoenix to witness an incredible reunion between the two. It's another Real TV exclusive. Rolling thunder shakes the stands at Phoenix International Raceway. Race cars tear around the track at 130 miles an hour. A spectator with a home video camera tries to keep pace with a fast and furious NASCAR action. But his camera catches much more than a race. Two cars collide, shooting flames 60 feet into the Arizona sky. Driver Dave Bird is trapped inside the inferno of car number 55. Rescue crews race to the burning car. One driver walks away, but Dave can't get out of his seatbelt. When he finally does, he falls face first into the flames. It happens so fast, it's tough to see. But here's what caused the crash. On the far turn, Dave's car is bumped from behind, sending him careening out of control. Dave's car stops just inches from the wall. Another driver plows right into Dave's crippled car, turning it into a giant fireball. There was a car that was towards the back that apparently didn't see me. And then uh, it was late in the day. I was in the shadows. We have a black car. And I uh, didn't even realize I'd got hit until I saw the fire. When I really knew I was in big trouble was when I fell in the gas and I looked and everything was flaming and I could feel it. And then I thought, I, I, I thought I was gonna die. Dave Bird might not have survived if it weren't for the heroic actions of one brave volunteer fireman. A man who Dave has never met to thank, until now. We went to Phoenix and brought Dave a special surprise. Basically, one of the fire crew uh, mm -hmm. saw me running around the end of the car looking for somebody, and he started shouting to get on the ground. I guess he tackled me from what I heard and uh, put the fire out. So uh, this guy was a hero? Totally. So do you have any idea who saved your life? No clue. Would you like to meet him? I'd love to meet him. Jonathan? Jonathan? No kid. Meet Dave. How are you doing, Mr. Bird? How are you doing? Good to see you, boy. Thanks for Great everything. No problem. Saved no my problem. life. Wow. Great to see you. Uh -huh. Thanks a bunch. Real TV tracked down 19-year-old Jonathan Redwing, a student trainer for the Arizona State University football team, who put his own life on the line by tackling the burning driver. I was more scared for him because I knew how severe he'd been in the fire for a while and, and you know, for me to pad out was no big deal. It was tough because my gloves started to catch on fire. Dave spent months in treatment for his second and third degree burns. But even after his brush with death, Dave is back behind the wheel, winning races. Smoke coming up, and then all of a sudden we saw flames. It must have been 60 feet high in the air. And then we just panicked. Can the driver escape the deadly flames in time? It's rodeo, Mexican style. There's no rules, no regulations, which makes for plenty of danger for cowboys and spectators. I'll say the injuries most common would be head injuries, neck, ribs, and arms. These snowmobilers take their sport to a new extreme. It's called water skimming, and it's going to leave one rider wishing he'd stuck to the snow. And we've got the lowdown on the latest looks for some highbrow sports. The unpredictable, the unthinkable, the unbelievable. Athletes pushing the limits and facing their ultimate challenges. You gotta see this. Looks at sports on the edge. 
Phoenix International Speedway. It's the first race of the season for NASCAR Southwest Tour Division, and qualifying is underway. Bird into turn three. Dave Bird, your leader, yes. All eyes are on Dave Bird in the 50 car. He should be the driver to beat, but there's trouble ahead for Dave. Four laps in, a car spins him from behind at full throttle, stalling his car. And then the unthinkable happens. The violent impact punctures his fuel cell. 22 gallons of gasoline break over the car like a tidal wave and explode. Dave is trapped inside the inferno. Crew member Ben Rowland was trackside. We saw black smoke coming up, and then all of a sudden we saw flames less than 60 feet high in the air. And then we just panicked. High above the track, Dave's spotter also sees the explosion. He's the only one in radio contact with Dave. Dave, get out of the car. The car's on fire. Get out of the car. Dave, can you hear me? Get out of the car. When the car stopped spinning, Dave didn't say anything on the radio, and I immediately told him to get out of the car. Get out of the car. I told him twice, and he wasn't uh, moving. Seconds tick by like minutes. Dave is struggling with his harness, but it won't release. Panic sets in as the flames intensify. I was approximately uh, seven stories above the accident, and we could feel the heat from the flames heat up the area where we were standing. I knew it wasn't good. You can't expect someone to be unscathed when you see flames shooting 60 feet in the air, totally engulfing the car. Dave's been breathing in fuel and flames for 15 grueling seconds. Then, suddenly, his safety net drops. But things quickly go from bad to worse. Dave slides out the window, landing headfirst into a pool of fiery gasoline. The fuel was all over the racetrack, and when he got back up, the fuel was on fire that had soaked into his driver's uniform. His arm was on fire and his legs were on fire. Emergency workers rush to Dave with extinguishers drawn, but the fire is relentless. His race suit is absorbing the fuel like a candle's wick. Finally, after 46 seconds, the flames are extinguished. Dave's burns are extensive. One thing we noticed when we saw Dave is uh, that the goggles had melted, and that could testify to the intense heat he was under. I was terrified. Paramedics race Dave to a nearby burn unit. I could imagine what it had done to his skin. I was just hoping and praying that uh, he would be able to live a normal life after that, let alone come back and race again. Dave Bird should be a dead man, but he's not. You know, there is a lot of luck in racing, good and bad, and uh, that was actually a lot of good luck right there. And you can see just how lucky he was in these incredible trackside photos of the crash. I was surprised because one second we were racing and the next second the whole car's engulfed in flames. And I kept thinking, I know I need to get out of the car, but I can't. And then the fire just came all inside, and then I just basically panicked. Got the seat belts loose, and I went through the window net, and I thought once I was out, I was out. And uh, I didn't know there was fuel all on the track, and I went out head first, and fell head first into the fuel, and I could feel it on my face and my lips and, uh, and my neck, and it was, uh, it really, really hurt. And I thought that uh, I wasn't gonna have any lips or nose left or, or anything else. After multiple surgeries, Dave made a full recovery. And since that horrible day, NASCAR has changed how car fuel cells are installed, hopefully preventing an accident like his from ever happening again. As for Dave, three months later, he was back and winning. Dave Bird into turn three. Dave Bird out of turn four. Dave Bird is your winner. This would be a sweet story, just on the aspect that Dave survived the wreck. He lived through it. but. It's even sweeter now that he's come back from this wreck and he's actually doing better now. Dave is fortunate to be alive today. He uh, had somebody looking out after him during that accident and uh, another 10 seconds in that car and he would not be with us today. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. It was bad that it happened, but we were actually lucky the way things turned out.